My name is Olusegun Mokolu, and in this short audio message, I'll be sharing on managing finance in Christian marriage. Take note that I said managing finance in Christian, Christian with emphasis on Christian marriage. Now, money is a tool, but money is also dangerous and money do cause rift among couples fight among couples some will use money to manipulate and oppress the other even in marriage you know jesus said you cannot serve god and mammon almost equating money and god that's to tell us the seriousness of money so as a believer, we need to understand the teachings of the Bible about money and particularly with regards to marriage so that we can, um, we can rightly administer finance properly in marriage. Now, this message is for believers because the things that we will be looking at in this message is not going to apply to everybody. Everyone will not be able to uh, practice or apply these principles to their lives. It is only people who are born again, who are God's children, that can apply this to their lives. Therefore, this message will be very useful to singles who wants to get married and those who are already in marriage. Now, if you look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Marriage is a mysterious union, a covenant union between a man and a woman. It is God that does this joining. That is why it is not right nor proper for pastors to say on wedding day i therefore join you no no woman being can join what they should be saying is that i therefore stand as witness that the two of you have agreed to be joined by god together in holy matrimony human beings do not join it is only god that joins so marriage is a covenant union Marriage is a mysterious, you know, a mystery because you can't see that joining, yet it has taken place. It's a mystery. Now, so the Bible said that they are one. This is the foundation and the principle of administering finance in a Christian marriage. This is the, this is the foundation. Once we miss this, we cannot understand anything. With this, what the scripture is saying is that there is no more two. There is nothing like, this is my money. This is our money. This has to be clear that in biblical marriage, the man does not own anything. The woman does not know anything. So let's say the man is earning um, $10,000 every month. And the woman is earning five hundred dollars. That means that their income is ten thousand five hundred. That ten thousand five hundred belongs to the man and the woman. It is not ten thousand to the man and five five hundred to the woman. Let's also assume that the woman earns twenty thousand dollars a month, and the man earns one thousand dollars a month. It means that the family income is twenty one thousand dollars a month. The woman does not own 20,000 and the man does not own 1,000. They both own it. You see, in biblical marriage, God is the breadwinner. When you look at when you look at this Genesis chapter 2, when God was creating the woman, God was not creating the woman so that Adam can provide for him. God was not God didn't create the woman because she needed a man to meet her needs. In fact, the woman didn't need love. It was the man that needed help. So this concept that the man 
is the is the sole provider is very wrong don't get me wrong a man will be responsible in marriage but you see the bible says, cause is he that puts his trust in another man if you get married and then you are relying on your husband to be your provider you are putting yourself under a curse when the scripture says if a man does not does not provide for his family he is worse than an infidel he wasn't talking about husband he was talking about widows that if you don't take care of those widows that the church cannot provide for in your family then you are worse than an infidel so you will never find any scripture that says that the man should be the breadwinner god is the breadwinner now by virtue of the man being under the commandment of god to love he will definitely cherish provide nourish his wife there is no doubt about that but you must understand that whatever god is giving the family belongs to the man and to the woman this has to be very clear you need to understand this in your mind that there is nothing like my money his money there's nothing like that in biblical marriage it is our money you see when you understand this you will have peace of mind that is why as singles when you want to get married you must you must clear these things you know a lot of ladies when they they will just fall in love and they want to get married and they are not going to be raising serious intellectual issues serious issues of consequence they are not going to discuss it they just want to get married many have have gotten married without ever sitting each other down to say how are we going to administer finance in this marriage how are we going to spend money in this marriage the man is hiding some money somewhere the woman is hiding something somewhere that is not biblical we are children of light we cannot hide the but if you read the, the next verse verse 25 of that genesis chapter 2 it says and they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed they were both naked they were both transparent there has to be transparency in your finance you can't be hiding you can't own anything you cannot you can't say this car is my own there's nothing like this car is my own anymore you can't say this is my own land i'm building my own house is very wrong in christian marriage everything must be joint because you are no more two you are now one it has to be clear look at it you share your body with each other you share your nakedness with each other which is more important money or your body certainly it is your body then why then will you not want to share your money with one another so in a in a proper biblical marriage what you have is joint income you see when we say joint account we don't necessarily mean that you have to go to one bank and open the same account and operate it together if you do that there's no problem but that's not what joint account means joint accounts means that you both own your resources those resources could be in 10 banks in fact the wife may be signatory to to six the husband signatory to 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 four the fact remains that every money in those account belong to the two of you and you can both have access to it anytime so there is no need to hide you see as a man when you understand this and apply this in your marriage you will be at peace your wife will not make demands of you because everything you earn has been placed on the table and you are and you have decided how you are to spend it so she is not going to make any demand because she knows this is all the money it is because the the woman does not know what the man has particularly in some part of the world that the woman keeps making demand but you see as christian the lord had made everything so simple for us this thing is so simple what is money you just made covenant that you want to be with each other for the rest of your life what then is money so you must understand this principle see somebody might say well my spouse is a is a wasteful person my spouse is that's why you see you need to clear this thing before you get married 
If you know that the way this person spends money, you cannot cope with it. You better don't marry the person. If the person does not understand this biblical principle, you better don't marry the person. Because you see, as believers, we must be prudent. The scripture says a prudent wife is from the Lord. We must be prudent. He that is wise in heart shall be called prudent. The prudent is wise in heart. We are not wasteful people. Jesus said, gather the fragment that nothing be lost. Jesus is not a wasteful person. You cannot say yes because you are the man now. You are the head of the house and there is joint income. You now want to waste the resources. Or you say that you want to prioritize your own family. Let me tell you, it is your spouse that is your priority. You cannot take your family, resources, your, 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 your family resources and be spending it on your extended families, particularly without the understanding or permission of your spouse. You have to jointly do things together for them. But your spouse must be your priority. And if your spouse is standing and saying no, then you must find a way to reach an agreement before you proceed. Because that spouse is your covenant spouse. And God will honor the decision of your spouse than the decision of your relatives. These things has to be very clear. Very, very clear. You must define these things before you step into marriage. You see, and that is why what we have done is to, to create a, a free Bible marriage course. We have two courses, one for singles and one for married. One of the modules deals with managing finance in, in the home, in Christian marriage. If you are interested, you can subscribe. You will do it by email. It is completely free. From beginning to, to the end, it is free. You are not going to pay a dime. If you are interested and you are single or you are married, all you need to do is just to write to us. The email address is this. Bible Love Helper at gmail.com once you write state that you want the enrollment form and let us know whether you are single or you are married because we have two courses so that we can send you the appropriate form if you are married we send you the married form if you are single we send you the single form when you go through this course you will now understand practical things because there are a lot of things that i cannot discuss in this in this audio message because it has a length it must go but in the course, you will see how to daily manage finance. The principles of the scripture, for example, like borrowing. As much as possible, the Bible never encouraged borrowing. The Bible never encouraged debt. Buying things that you can't pay for. Those things should be done away with. We should learn to be contented with what we have and manage what we have. So all these principles are discussed and clearly taught. When it comes, uh, uh, when you take the marriage course, so I encourage you today that you can take, you should, you should subscribe and take that marriage course. But in case you want to reach me on WhatsApp, um, Telegram, or text message, or you want to put a call through, the number is plus two three four eight one eight six one five seven eight five two. Once again. My name is Olusha Gumokolo, and it is my prayer that the Lord will grant you wisdom to manage finance in your home. Money will not destroy your marriage. Money will be a tool in your hand to glorify God, to honor Him, to care for your spouse, to care for your family, to support the church of God, to support ministries, to support the, the, the mission, the evangelization of the world. Money will not cause you sorrow. Money will not cause you problem. You will not use money to manipulate your spouse, to oppress your spouse. And if you have done that, may the Lord forgive you. May the Lord give you a heart to repent and go back to your spouse today and say, I have sinned against you. And henceforth, I want to make it right. I pray the Lord will fix every financial problem in your home. Maybe you are struggling, you don't even have enough. The Lord will help you. The Lord will raise help for you. He will give you skill, wisdom, and the grace and ability to do things that will help you to earn genuine godly income in the name of Jesus. 
Amen.